Hi, and welcome to Sister to Sister. Today is going to be a great show. We're talking money. Now, some people would say I'm cheap. I like to say I'm thrifty. So I'm so excited that we're going to have Ruth Sukup today, the writer of Living Well and Spending Less. So stick around. <music> Hello, welcome to Sister to Sister. We are five opinionated women. And we honestly answer the questions that perturb all of us mm -hmm. with the word of God. And something perturbs me. Listen to this. <laughs> this is just outrageous. There was a photograph that was recently leaked to the press of supermodel Cindy Crawford, who is absolutely beautiful. Yeah. And she was looking a little curvaceous, kind of normal, before airbrushing, right? So Crawford's photo sparked debate. She came, that's not me and all this crazy stuff. So why are we seeking perfection that we would airbrush ourselves? And when did curves become a bad thing? Hmm. Well, have you ever seen where they show the comparison of the models from like the 40s and the 50s mm -hmm. to the models of today mm -hmm. and how different the bodies are? Mm -hmm. Except it's for the true. Twiggy years. If you're, well, if you're with me, like the Twiggy the years, years, in the 70s, years. they were <laughs> emaciated. Th that well, was only true. one but section. It's, it's very striking to see the difference where it's back in those days, the curves were beautiful. And even if you go back to like Renaissance time it's where the right, paintings yeah. of the women yeah. were so, yeah. you know, robust. Luscious. And, yes. And it just, <laughs> and so I think, I think part of it is we do go through phases of what, you know, the, the beauty is. But I think our society just places value on outward appearance. And, and what does the word say? God looks at the uh, inward appearance. Right. Uh, man looks at the outward appearance. God, God looks, looks at, at the heart. heart. And so yep. that's that's where we are messing up, where that value is placed on the outward appearance, whether it's curvy or not. Right. The value cannot be on that outward but appearance. But we right. all just got up today and spent an hour getting ready and dressed and Speak makeup and hair. And <laughs> it took time to I've curl your hair thing. and get oh. your accessories <laughs> and call your friend to borrow the shirt. So like we do care a, a bit about the outside in our present. I think we should care about about our presentation yeah. but what we should not be is consumed with weight and comparing ourselves yeah. with airbrushed tall thin skinny we have to be Perfect. satisfied and really content in who we are right and kids need to realize even like on Instagram which is supposed to be like you know selfies and people's own pictures yeah. these celebrities are airbrushing those pictures mm -hmm. yeah. on Instagram so com those comparisons are dangerous yeah. they're downright they dangerous really? oh yeah they, you know it, it, it they definitely are dangerous, but I don't know that we can blame them for it. It's, you know, yeah. how um, we educate ourselves, how we educate our children, their self-esteem. You know, the scripture, it makes me think of in the word in John where it clearly tells us all that's in the world is what? Lust of the eye, mm -hmm. lust of the flesh, the pride, of pride of life. Yep. And so when I mm -hmm. move into that comparison zone, uh, I need to look like her to look mm. good. Mm -hmm. My hair needs to look like this right. to be beautiful. Right. And, and, and I can speak that from even being blessed being African American because there, there are just certain things that people are, depending on the culture that you're moving in, mm -hmm. you are more accepted mm. because if you look a little more like that culture, then you'll get more compliments. Mm. Oh, that really looks nice. Well, mm -hmm. you like it because it looks a little more like your culture. And so, you know, I, though, there's mm. little things that we do have to watch. And I'm, Corey already said what mm. I was going to say about, you know, the Renaissance days mm, and all right. that. When you look at beautiful artwork, mm. you know, the women were much more voluptuous as mm. opposed to this waif figure, you know, right. that looks all emaciated and, you know, encourages bulimic, you know. Right. And but don't so, you think some 14. of these publishers should be held mm. responsible for showing things that aren't attainable? They are literally photoshopping these bodies that do not exist. I don't know if I agree with that and I'll tell you why because if you work in that industry you know you you have to change clothes quickly mm -hmm. and so you, you you can't tailor if you're behind the scenes I can't tailor you in 
and five minutes before you get ready to walk the runway again. So that's another reason too. Just like if you went to a plus models uh, modeling uh, show session, they, right. session you right. know, mm -hmm. the, they would all be in the plus sizes. So if mm -hmm. you know you showed up and you're a size eight, we're going to have a problem because this thing is going to look like a ten on you right. or a half a ten. But it's, it's you know, well, it's I, it's enjoy, plus size yeah. now. I enjoy yeah. watching the models and the magazine. I, I don't know. It's it's fun. It's like it art in a different it, way. It's sad that in this age where they promote diversity. They don't promote diversity for the well, females. They're, yeah. they're promoting That's perfection. perfection. That's right. the thing. It's all about perfection but and we are not we perfect somebody else tell us what perfection is right. and that's yeah, why I can, that's where I struggle yeah, a little bit no, yeah. I, I, I don't that. think it's Ooh, healthy this is good. but you this know. is really but good are really people, good our companies that are saying Dove, I think, is yes, one like here's the perfect. natural, or like right. there's right. magazines now for women that the the women are untouched. That's right. So, so not many. Set the so we should support that. Right. That's right. right. But the one thing I support is prayer, all the time, mm -hmm. anytime. Mm -hmm. And there is a question I have for you: Why do you think when we pray that God makes us wait? Why? Why do we have to wait? I definitely, you know, prayer is my passion. So the yes. moment you say prayer, I'm like, yes. I'm like in there. But I just think, um, according to the word, you have to let patience have its perfect work. Mm -hmm. It also helps to build courage in us. Mm -hmm. And just like when you're raising a child, and the scripture talks about that too, that if you being evil know how to give good things to your children, how much more your heavenly father. Mm -hmm. When you raise a child, you wouldn't go home and give your seven-year-old mm -hmm. the keys to no. a Mercedes Benz. No. They're not ready for it. Right. They, you you, you yeah. know, and right. you're not doing that to be mean. Right. So there are things that God has for us. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we're blessed to have our sister here that is an attorney. Yes. Well, mm -hmm. yes. you had to go through some preparation <laughs> yes. for that. Right. You know? <laughs> and, and if I'm looking for an attorney, I don't want somebody that they just, you know, right. got their license right. from off of a, a, the back of a matchbook cover. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. Right. So there's, <laughs> there, there's waiting is a very good thing. Mm -hmm. Waiting equates with time, and time is a commodity and a gift from God, and we have to steward it well. That's I'm right. not crazy about waiting. At well, all. Well, I don't and think that we're. I love the scripture all. in Isaiah 40. Those who wait, hopefully wait in the Lord, mm -hmm. will renew their strength. Mm -hmm. It's not just even a matter of building courage, but you renew your strength. Mm -hmm. And I think of um, Abraham yeah. had to wait to have a child. That's mm -hmm. true. That's a long wait. Mary and Martha had to wait till Lazarus was dead to have him resurrected. But they mm -hmm. might have thought Jesus didn't come in time. He came right in time. Right. Jesus right. didn't start his <laughs> ministry till he was 30. That's Think good. Think about that. That's good. So there is a waiting period that she said, that Flo said, that I agree with. There are things we need to learn in the process so that God's timing is well, perfect. Here's what I want to learn, though, from each of you, because I think as Christians, we walk about. Do you think that when people wear Christian T-shirts, <laughs> really, are they wiggy-waggy, like crazy, cheesy or are they effective they used to be look cheesy but now they're cool I mean I, I, I have girls at church they will they're going on websites all over the place to get the new cool Christian shirts that's, oh, I you know cool. love God say? or yeah. since I'm not you know cool wear love out <laughs> I mean they're so they I mean they, they want to wear a message they want mm -hmm. to and usually these uh, churches and organizations are giving toward a good cause so okay, so so T-shirts are not cheesy anymore. So if you see people they walking around with bad. Jesus shirts, they're not cheesy anymore. They're well, great, and I, we love that. You know what, Kathy? Though, but the thing of it is, and and I'm not taking away from uh, what Pastor said, but it's just that: do you wear a message or walk a message? That's because right. you have people that have bumper stickers, right. Jesus is, is yeah. Lord, and they're going down the highway. <laughs> Same thing. Yeah. Not acting no, like no, it. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, I won't even say what true. they do and say. That's you know, true. You have a T-shirt on, and you. So you know, I I I say the engrafted word, the engrafted it's word. It's inside, not outside. But you we're know? our oh, guest that's I'm coming. Yeah. I'm yeah. not anti-T-shirt. Right. Right. You know? right. right. Not, not, not anti-T-shirt. Not, anti -t -shirt. not yeah. a wet T-shirt though. We'll try that. Well, but you know, our guest. The guest that's coming up, and and I just need one of you to comment on mm -hmm. this. It's going to be about being thrifty, but it's actually about contentment. So mm -hmm. the Bible says that godliness with contentment is great gain. So what does that mean? Anybody? I need one of you. Come on. Well, I have a quote from Jeremiah Burroughs. Contentment does not come by adding to what you have, but by subtracting from what you desire. Oh, I like oh. that. Isn't that I, like good? I yeah. really like that. And I think yeah. that you are going to love our next guest because she talks about 
contentment. contentment. Yes, yes. Lady you're going to love her, so Horses stay, her. <laughs> <laughs> stay right know. there because you're going to hear lots more from the sisters and our very special guest coming up next. Welcome back to Sister to Sister. You can see we have another sister right. with us today. And I want to welcome her. She is an author, and her book is called, you're going to talk about it, Living Well, Spending Less. Ruth, welcome to Yay. you to Sister Yay. to Sister. Thank you so much for so having me. It's so, so fun so to be here. Healthy. Yes, and we, the sisters <laughs> all have for you today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Aww. So I'm going to jump right into okay. the first question. I love your book, first of all. Thank so thank you. you. I grew up very thrifty in a thrifty home yes. so I appreciate all that you had to say um, you give up advice about living well spending less but um, it hasn't been an easy road for you so can no. you talk about that a little bit no. well I did not grow up very thrifty and so it has not been an easy road for me <laughs> the first thing I like to tell people is that I am NOT a money saving expert I am a money spending expert <laughs> and so I have just learned along the way and really the hard way to, um, some tricks along the way to help me spend less but there's a reason it's not called living while well, saving more it's called spending less because okay. that's really my struggle and um, you know it started just because I was fighting a lot with my husband about money that's how I got started along the way and um, we were fighting all the time uh, we got to a point where it felt like we weren't gonna make it and mm -hmm. so uh, we knew something had to give we wanted to make it and so I decided to go on this very tight budget and um, I started writing about it. And that's, I started my blog first, livingwellspendingless.com, and the book was birthed out of that, and, and the journey and the lessons I found, I learned along the way. But you know, for me, it didn't start out with this noble purpose. <laughs> Is it true <laughs> you used to dream about your mansion that you would I live in someday? I did, yeah. I did. When I was a little girl, like my dad would have these architectural digest magazines, and I would look in the back and they'd have all these mansions for sale. Mm -hmm. And so I would go in there and I'd find the biggest one, and I would like, <laughs> okay, this is the one I'm gonna imagine. And I draw out the floor plan and I had this like secret hideaway in the back of oh. one of the closets and I would go in there with all my catalogs and I would shop, like virtually shop on the, through these catalogs and imagine, oh, I was gonna buy this to put in the house and this to put in the house. And it would take me hours and I would be trying to fill up this house, this imaginary house and I'd get done and I would be like, oh. And then wow. I had to start all over again. Like there was, it was such a letdown when yeah. I was done because it I'm never, assuming. it never felt like it was done. So you could have been an architect <laughs> I or, or an interior designer. <laughs> <laughs> could have been something. But then I found when I grew up and got my own house, I did the same thing, but in real life with real money. Uh -oh. And so when we were redecorating our house, I was filling it and filling it and filling it. And then suddenly yeah. we were done and the budget was done and I still didn't feel full and that was really where this whole journey I, started. I love when you said budget because that's like the B word. Yes. <laughs> I don't like the B word at all in the house but your husband put you on a budget Yes. and I love this because this is a girl after my own heart. She <laughs> saved money on food so she could use the rest of the money on the important stuff like stuff for the home and accessories and, and makeup and shoes. Yes. Yes. So do you still That's struggle with that even today or is that just totally gone? I think there's always going to be a part of me that struggles with that. Yeah. That I like pretty things. I yeah. think there are two types of, types of people. There are spenders and there are savers. And yeah. there has never been a question of what category I fall into. My husband hates to shop. Like he could never go shopping ever again in his whole life and he would be perfectly happy and content. Yeah. I just like it. Yeah. But I think that going on a budget and and learning to live well within my means has definitely changed changed the way that I look at money and the way I look at things and I also know that I have to take certain precautions to not put myself in those positions so I don't go to the mall and I don't go to Target unless I have somebody with me because Target is my weakness you need, I, to, <laughs> you need to intervention on Target you never go to the mall not I, even once a month not even once a month. I mean, not that I've never been to the mall, no, but it's very rare. Good. It's very die. rare. Yeah, it's very rare. You know, I'm, I'm hearing in all of this that through this journey, you definitely hit a place of dissatisfaction. Mm -hmm. And I think that all of our viewers can relate to yes. that in some yeah. type, some form or another. Absolutely. But maybe you could share some helpful hints with us because mm -hmm. dissatisfaction can just create depression so and much. oppression yep. and just cause a spiraling down effect mm -hmm. for people. 
Well, depression is definitely something that I've struggled with um, in my adult life a lot. And I've written a lot of, I write a little bit about it in the book, but I've written a lot about it on my blog as well. And for me, that, that feeling of always wanting to fill myself up mm -hmm. was, I think, what, where this came from. And for me, it was shopping. Mm -hmm. For other people, it's different things. Some people, it's sports, and they're always you know, obsessed with sports or obsessed with working out. For other people, it's something else. And <coughs> it, it, it's all a symptom of the same disease, which is that we're trying to fill our lives with something to give ourselves meaning when right. there's only one thing Amen. that can ever fill right. us up. Amen. And for me, it really had to, it had to be a change that happened in my heart. Right. And I had to pray so fervently every single day. And I still I have to pray that prayer every single day. Lord, take away the desires of this world and yeah. let me store my treasures in heaven. So because good. if I don't, so they're not. Nothing else is going to be able to fill me up. I love the I fact love that, that you called it a disease because we sometimes move in such a place of dysfunction mm -hmm. and obsession of different things, mm -hmm. and we need to be able to move away from that. And I think you do an excellent job in your book in helping oh, people. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of your book, you have a tagline. Yes. 12 Secrets of a Good Life. And yes. one of your secrets is less stuff equals more joy. Can you tell us about yes. that? Yes, less yeah. stuff yeah. equals <laughs> more joy. joy. Never think yes, that. yes. Right. Well, I, I have found that to be very true. Obviously, I spent a lot of years filling my house with stuff. And um, I was not only filling my life with stuff, but I was filling my kids' life with stuff oh, too. Mm -hmm. And so what happened, and I think this happens to a lot of moms, is that, especially when you have little kids, and I started this journey when my kids were one and three. And so we were, I was at home, I was bored, I was a stay-at-home mom, I was restless, and I didn't know how to keep my kids entertained because they were, they were one and three. They didn't keep themselves entertained. <laughs> so I kept buying stuff thinking mm -hmm. that, something was gonna be the thing that would like let me have five minutes of peace. And I was filling up our lives and filling up our lives and buying all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And then one day, um, as they got a little older, I think they were three and six when this happened, um, their room was just so full of stuff. And I was always telling them, you gotta clean up, you gotta clean up. If you don't clean up your stuff, I'm gonna take it away. If you don't clean up your stuff, I'm gonna take it away. Which I think most parents say at one mm -hmm. point or another. And Every then one day, day I'm just like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to take it all away. And so I did. I packed everything up and they were kind of watching me like, Mom, what are you doing? And they, you know, at first they were a little shocked and then they just kind of thought it was fun and they started helping. We packed every single last toy, every Barbie, every little pet Where did shop. it go? Where did you take all we this? We took, you know, we donated a lot of it. We sold some of it. We put some up in the attic um, mm -hmm. so that, they, that we could rotate it out. and. I thought that they would be so contrite and so ready f for to do anything that I wanted and they would keep the room clean from then on and they would do anything to get their toys back and as it turns out they didn't want any of that stuff. They were happier with none of it and they started using their imaginations more. They started actually entertaining themselves a lot more. They would play together. They stopped wow. fighting and it was like wow. that was where the light bulb for me came on. Like mm. I was not only doing that to them, I was doing it to myself and I was doing it to our whole family. Now, did yeah. you clean your house out too, not just the um, kids? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 let's go yeah. through your closet. Yes. Yeah. In fact, and I'm working are. on my next yeah. book right now, which is called Unstuffed. Um, oh, and so that I is like that. talking yes. about that same that. journey. Yeah. Yes. So it's not necessarily organization, it's just getting rid of getting rid of it it's it because i think sometimes we think our problem is a lack of closet space right an organization and it's just that we have too much stuff yes mm -hmm. right. now you're talking about <laughs> little kids when yes. i was a child i used to ask i literally asked my parents this are we rich because i literally had no idea what our you know socioeconomic mm -hmm. static status was and my my mom always gave the same answer yes. it's we're rich in the lord which was <laughs> a great answer and I i'm sure our viewers that say too. that too we're rich in the lord so do you think children should be aware of money issues? Should they not know anything? What, where do you That's kind of see the balance? That's a great question. That's a great question. And I talk a little bit about that in my book as well. I grew up in a family that did have a lot of money. My parents have done very well. My dad is a businessman. And so I knew that we had more. We had a big house. We had a tennis court in the backyard. I knew that we had more than other people had. Mm -hmm. But my parents, the only answer they ever gave was we don't talk about money. And that was disastrous for me yeah. as a child because yeah. I never learned. And mm -hmm. so as an adult, I had no concept of mm -hmm. how, and that's why, one of the reasons, I mean, it's my own fault. I made my own decisions, but I didn't have a good base to start with. 
So with my own kids, I really think it's important to start teaching them lessons wow, early. That's good. And one of the things that we talk about, you know, and they're young. It's not like I can sit down with them and create a budget. Right. But we, we, they know money comes from work, and we talk mm -hmm. about that every single day. Yeah. Girls, where does money come from? Work. Why does mommy <laughs> work to get money? What do you have to do if you want money? I have to work. <laughs> and they will. How old are they? They are now five and eight. Five and, and they eight. Know money they, comes they, from they work. work? <laughs> They work around the house. You know, they have regular chores, and then they have extra things they can do to earn money. Yeah. And then with their money, we, we don't budget it, but they have to split it into three envelopes. So they have a save envelope, a spend envelope, and a give envelope. Is that in here? Um, Is that in I the book? I talk a little bit about it in here, okay, yes. Can you, can you just tell me about the blog? Amy said you yep. have millions... I get about a million and a half visitors per month. Wait a minute. <laughs> a million and a Many half visitors, visitors per yes. month. Okay, yes. tell us what the blog is again so it's we can be a million and one. Livingwellspendinglesscom so. Wow, and you write every day? Um, you post I, every day? I post three articles per week. And are you going to post about... There's a lot about, of content Are you going to post about sister to sister? <laughs> oh, I'm yeah. sure. Oh, oh, you guys baby. will definitely get an Instagram oh, post. <laughs> you know, you really are a young woman that has wisdom beyond yes, her years. Yes. Yes. And it's such an honor to have you here mm. and to be able to just to interview you and have you share with mm. our audience. You know, you. I also think that... I don't know how you feel about it, but this is what I'm taking away from your book. Even though you're talking about material things, which can definitely be a hindrance, but also you are talking about how to unclutter our souls. Right. Because yeah. that's really right. what's right. make when you have a cluttered home, when you're seeking uh -huh. things to fulfill something, there's something broken in our soul. Right. And I right. really feel that there's just something that God has given you, just a little snippet of, of wisdom and insight there on that, and you've articticulated it so well yes. in your book. You have, sweetheart. The you really have. learned the hard way. Yes. So my but husband always it. gets mad at me because yeah. he's like, "I could have told you this ten years ago. Couldn't you have just listened to me?" And I said, "No, <laughs> I have to. Yeah. I have to learn the hard but way." To take that next step and then to to blog about your journey. Right. I mean, that takes some faith and some boldness to say, "Hey, I'm going to just tell people where I failed, where I did well." I mean, so it, it's really Very helping people. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. It reminds me of the thank scripture, you. God puts eternity in everybody's heart. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to fill it with so many other things, mm -hmm. as Flo right. said. Right. And eternity is there. Seek the Lord first. Yes. He'll put it in order. Very much so. And, you know, I think that it's... it. <laughs> It doesn't help, for me, it doesn't help me to hear somebody who's done everything right and made all the right decisions. That's correct. Because we I'm a disaster. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. And I am in need of grace every single day, That's and right. I yeah. still make mistakes every single day. And so I think that, for me, that's one of the reasons I wanted to write the book, is just, here, I'm a mess. And you're a mess. We're all messes. But these are the things that have helped me, and they might just help you, too. That's right. And we know that you are not a mess and that God loves you so much, and so do we. And I'm going to go home and throw things out. <laughs> we'll be right back. We love to end sister to sister with a scripture. And today it's Hebrews 13, verses 5. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Girls, be content with what we have. Is that not the message I love for that. today? And love I'm it. going to unclutter and un everything. How do I get <laughs> more information? First of all, you're so beautiful and tall. Oh, thank you. How do we get the information? <laughs> um, you can go to my website, livingwellspendingless.com, or you can find it anywhere books are sold, Amazon.com, Barnes & Noble, um, or christianbook.com. Okay, we'll do that. And in the meantime, we always end sister to sister with this particular scripture because it means so much to us. And it goes like this, as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of one sister sharpen the other. So as we come to you every single week, know that we love you and we pray for you. And we will see you again next time on Sister to Sister.